How's it going guys? It's Kyle with the How To Go123 here and today I'll be showing you guys how to make a portable Windows USB drive. We'll be installing a fully functional copy of Windows onto a USB flash drive or external hard drive and you'll be able to plug this drive into any computer and you'll be able to boot into Windows from it. And uh, this will work on Windows 7, 8, 8.1 and of course Windows 10. So before I get into the tutorial, I actually want to go through a few important things, but if you just want to skip right to the tutorial, I'll have a timestamp uh, listed on the screen here and just skip to the time there uh, if you just want to get straight into the tutorial. So first I'll go over what you need. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, this will work on a USB flash drive or an external hard drive. The drive just needs to be 16 gigabytes in size. However, I completely recommend doing this on an external hard drive over a USB flash drive because uh, an external hard drive has uh, better read and write speeds to keep up with the operating system. Hard drives are actually designed you know, to run operating systems. However, a USB flash drive is quite slow and uh, definitely struggles to run an operating system. I find half the time that I do this uh, and I tried to boot into Windows off a USB flash drive, I can't even get into the Windows step setup screen. So uh, every time I've done this on an external hard drive, it has worked flawlessly. I'd also recommend uh, having a USB 3.0 uh, drive over a USB 2.0 drive as the read and write speeds on USB 3.0 are quite a bit faster. Actually in this video, I will be using a USB 2.0 drive. Uh, it will still work fine. Actually, if you're going to be booting Windows 7 off of your drive, it does need to be USB 2.0 since Windows 7 doesn't actually uh, support booting off of USB 3. So I think that's everything I wanted to mention in the introduction here. Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial and set up our drive. So to begin, we're going to need to get an image file or an ISO file of the Windows version we're going to be putting onto our USB. So if you're going to be using Windows 10 like I am for this video, you can actually download the ISO file off the Microsoft website and I'll provide this link in the description below. So you're just going to need to download the Windows 10 installation media creation tool. So just click download tool now. And once it's done downloading, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. So now to go ahead and double click on it to open it. So once it's open, it's going to get a few things ready. So it's take about 30 seconds. Now you're going to want to accept the license agreement. Now give it a few more seconds. So now it's going to ask us what we want to do and we want to create installation media. We do not want to upgrade this piece now. So make sure that uh, create installation media USB flash drive DVD ISO file for another PC is checked. Now click next. And now you're going to want to choose the version uh, of Windows that uh, you want to download. So in this case, if you have this checked, it's going to use the recommended option for this PC, but you can uncheck that if you want to change the language. Addition, you you only have one option, which is Windows 10, and architecture, you're going to want to keep that at 64-bit. Uh, and then click Next, and make sure that ISO file is checked. Click Next, and now you're going to want to uh, find where you want to download the file onto your computer. So just so I know where it is, I'm going to leave it on my desktop, then click Save. And now it's going to start a download for our Windows ISO file. So this is probably going to take uh, quite a bit of time. This will depend on the speed of your internet. So I'll be back once this is done downloading. All right, so our image file has just finished downloading. So go ahead and click finish and the uh, media creation tool is going to do a bit of cleanup and then it's going to close. And now you can see that we have our Windows ISO file on our desktop here. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and plug in our USB flash drive or external hard drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and do so. And once you've done that, you're going to want to head over to this PC and you're just going to, going to want to format a backup and format your drive because uh, we're going to lose any data that's uh, on the drive here. So just backup any important files and then just right click on it and then go to format and you're just going to want to format your USB stick or external hard drive. All right. So once we've done that, we can close out of this PC. And you're going to want to head back into your internet browser and you're going to want to go to the second link in the description below and this is going to be for a software that's called win to usb and this is the software we're going to want to download and install to create our portable usb stick so you're just going to want to download the free version here there is a paid version but the free version will just work uh, fine for this video so just go ahead and click on download and just uh, save it wherever you want i'll save it on my desktop so once it's done downloading just open it to install it uh, it pretty much installs like any other program. So just choose your language, uh, accept the license agreement, hit next. Uh, I've already installed this program before, so that's why I'm getting this pop up here. Click on next, create a desktop shortcut if you'd like. 
next and install. So once it's done, click finish and it's just going to open up another tab in uh, your internet browser just as a thank you for downloading. But anyways, we can close out of Chrome here and we can uh, delete the installer here and we're going to want to open up the program from the desktop icon. Click on yes. It opened up another tab uh, in Chrome. Just go ahead and close out that. Uh, I did a check for updates. There shouldn't be any updates because we just downloaded the software. Click on OK. And you'll be presented with uh, something that looks like this. So under, you're going to want to make sure that the uh, disk icon is selected here and we're going to want to select an image file and this is the image file we downloaded earlier our windows iso that we downloaded earlier so mine's on my desktop so just navigate to where you downloaded it and then open it and you'll get uh, a list here of the different versions of windows 10 that you can install however on the free version of win to usb you can only install windows 10 home if you try to download windows 10 pro that's uh, going to give us an error saying we need to uh, by the full version. But anyways, just choose Windows 10 Home. And if you do have the Pro version, make sure you don't choose any of these versions that have the N at the end here because these don't have any uh, media capabilities. But anyways, just choose Windows 10 Home and click on Next. So here we're gonna, gonna choose the drive we want to make our portable USB. So make sure you choose the right one because it will be formatted again. So this one is just another external hard drive that I have plugged into my computer. But this is the one I want to create my portable USB with. So disk three, make, once again, make sure you choose the right one. And so now it's gonna ask you to choose a partition scheme here. Uh, so this depends on which computer you're going to really be uh, using your portable USB on. So most newer computers that were made after 2011 use GPT for UEFI, which have a, Uf a newer style uh, UEFI BIOS. But a lot of older computers use MBR for BIOS. Uh, the computers that I'm going to be using this on, uh, they're generally newer computers and use the UEFI BIOS. So I'm going to choose this one. Um, so. Like I mentioned before, newer computers made after 2011, you're probably going to want to choose this one, but older computers probably choose this one. So I'm going to choose GPT once again, then click on yes. Now it's going to format our drive again. Uh, this might take a few minutes, so I'll be back when this is done. Alright, so once that's finished, you'll be presented with something that looks like this. Uh, just make sure that these both are checked uh, under installation mode, keep it as legacy, and also just make sure that the full size of your disk is uh, listed here. Now go ahead and click on next and this is going to start the installation of your of Windows onto your portable USB. Uh, so depending on what you like what type of drive you're using. So for example, if you're using an external hard drive, this usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes. However, if you're using a USB stick, I find this can take a very long time, like over an hour and a half. So be patient. Uh, also, if it gets stuck at 0% here, uh, don't worry. I find that a lot of the time it will stay at 0% for quite a long time, but then after a bit of time, it will uh, start to go. So I'll be back when this is done uh, installing. All right, so the install has finished. Just go ahead and click on exit. Are you sure you want to quit? Click on yes. Now we can go ahead and eject our USB or hard drive. So now we can go ahead and unplug our hard drive or USB stick, plug it into any computer and boot uh, into Windows from it. So let's go ahead and try that out. So now go ahead and plug in your USB or external hard drive into any computer. So now go ahead and turn your computer on and you're going to need to boot into the BIOS. In my case, I just have to press the F2 key right after turning the computer on and that's going to bring me into the BIOS. Now it's a different key for every computer to get into the BIOS. Most commonly it's F2. Uh, delete, escape, or F12. So once you find out the key to boot into your BIOS, press it right after turning your computer on and it's going to boot into the BIOS. So every BIOS might be a little bit different, but the concept here is pretty much the same. We need to make sure that our computer will boot from our USB rather than our main hard disk or SSD. So what I'm going to do in my case is use the arrow keys to move over to the boot tab. I'm then going to make sure that the USB is in the first position in the boot priority, which in this tutorial, or in this case it already is, but if it wasn't, I would use the F5 or F6 key to move it up or down in the list. So once you've done that, just go over to the exit tab and then use the arrow keys to go down to exit and save and then press enter and then your computer is going to restart and boot uh, to the USB stick or external hard drive. So now our computer is booting into Windows that is running off our portable drive. 
Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this might take uh, quite a bit of time depending on the speed uh, of your drive. I think in this video it took about 10 minutes. Uh, it'll also take quite a bit of time because this is the first time we are booting into Windows off of this drive. So, you know, it just needs to copy over quite a bit of uh, setup files. So uh, I'll be back once we are in the Windows setup. So we are now in the Windows setup and you pretty much just set this up like any new Windows computer. You just, you know, enter your Microsoft account, create a passcode, uh, connect to a network and disable all the things you don't want Microsoft tracking you with. So I'm not really going to go through this too much, I'll just speed this part up as well and I'll be back once we are actually in Windows itself. And there we go, we have now booted in a Windows and we've successfully installed a full copy of Windows onto a portable USB. So you could use this uh, copy of Windows like normal, install programs, browse the web, uh, and then you can unplug this USB from your computer, plug it into a new computer, and your installation of Windows will be exactly the same. You might see your screen flicker a few times, that's just Windows installing new video card drivers. Also, if you were to plug this drive into another computer, Windows 10 does a very good job of detecting new hardware and it will actually go ahead and install new drivers for them automatically. So that's it for this tutorial, I hope it helped. If it did, leave a like, if it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys next time.